Good morning. Today is the 2nd of October and if you saw my last video you will know that I'm working through Inktober or kind of a daily drawing challenge. So I've set myself my own prompts. You'll have seen my setup page that I've done in my sketchbook, wrote out all my prompts that I can choose from each day and I want to show you what I did yesterday. So I chose the prompt Blackbird and the spread is not finished by any means but it was so nice just to sit down last night I didn't have a lot of time yesterday to draw but last night I put on a film I started watching Lord of the Rings I love that film um, and I just started sketching out some birds which was really nice and just a simple way to start my sketchbook as well I used pencil lines as you can see there kind of penciled out the bird first of all and then I went in with my uh, black, I use these, my brush tip uni pin and I also use this one for more details, so like details on the feathers, the Copic multi-liner, the 0 0.3 this one is. Anyway, today I have got work in a bit but I've got an hour now where I can sit and paint and oh my goodness it feels like such a luxury to have this time to paint so I am flipping the page starting my day two page and I'm pulling out my gouache so I've got this little plastic palette which is great for taking out and about with me um I have got quite a bit of gouache on here so I can reactivate these but I've also got this little box which my phone came in <laughs> it's just a really handy solid box um, I have got a couple of just quite fine or small paint brushes and then it's got all my gouache in here so these are what I've got, the Windsor & Newton um, Designers Gouache and yeah, several colours. This is one of my favourite colours actually, this tealy Cobalt, Cobalt Turquoise Light it's called. But um, yeah, so I'm just going to play around with these and today's prompt I have picked is Primrose and this is um, a motif that I have drawn a lot over this year. When I was out and about in the woods in the spring, I did kind of fall in love with the primroses and their beautiful, almost like heart-shaped petals. So I thought it would be fun to kind of splatter down some paint. I might do like, um, like a watercolour wash, first of all, maybe in some yellows and peachy colours. And then outline the primrose over the top. So we'll see how that works out. But I'm really trying to let myself play and push my ideas and push my skills so I'm not always just working in black and white kind of you know black fine line that I am being a bit more creative and letting loose and freeing myself up I guess so let's have a play okay so first of all with this I decided I pull out my phone and I just have a look for some images to work from um, I first of all pulled out Pinterest and just kind of flick through to see what I could find. And then I decided maybe I'll look at my Unsplash app as well. So there's Unsplash and Pixabay. They're both really good websites actually for royalty free images. So if you're looking for reference photos, something to draw from, they are my go-to. Um, they're kind of the best place to start. But as you can see, I, try, I typed in primrose but there weren't massive amounts on Unsplash but there were some quite nice images with beautiful colours so I did save one or two um, onto one of my flower boards um, but then I decided right I'm just going to go straight in with my gouache I picked out some colours that are kind of primrose colours <laughs> so like yellows and peaches um, and I really wanted to cover up this section in the middle, this bright pink ink that has seeped through from the very first page. Um, so I decided I'm just going to squeeze my gouache straight onto the page um, and just, yeah, paint from there. And again, it gives me that kind of fluidity. It kind of helps me to let go of control as well. So I'm just kind of mixing the colour on the page and the pith sketchbook is great for this because the paper is so gorgeous so you can see here I'm adding water and when when it does water it down you can still see it a little bit 
which is quite exciting really because it means if you did splurge down a load of ink on the page first of all and then paint it over the top with some gouache that you've kind of watered down you're going to get that ghost image coming through so whatever I'm doing I'm always getting ideas and inspiration for future art projects or future ways of working so yeah that was quite a fun thing to kind of realize so here I'm just splurging down a load of color and um, these gorgeous kind of pale ochres um, I also just really love pink so I decided it's not really a primrose color but I love pink so I'm gonna <laughs> add that down as well on the page and as you can see I'm just being quite fast with my brush strokes I'm using a flat brush and just trying to get some color on the page and um, for me it means that the page is less scary as well there's just a huge blank white sheet otherwise and I almost don't really know where to start but once you've got all this gorgeous color down you can see all the subtle textures and things there's already quite a lot going on it's a really nice base to then draw on top of so I've got my gouaches out here just got a few colors I also have my watercolors so I have used a bit of watercolor especially these colors here so that's been quite interesting to sort of mix that with my gouache and then I let all of that dry and decided I would draw in just some simple kind of primrose motifs using a colored pencil so I'm just doing those kind of heart shaped petals I'm not being too precious I'm not worrying too much about it needing to be an exact replica um, it's kind of my expression I guess of what a primrose is, what a primrose looks like. So I did a few with one pencil and then I decided maybe I'd try using a pencil that's quite light, quite similar colour to the background and almost more of a colour that I think that a primrose should be. So just I'm trying to break free of always using my black fine line and so this was a real experiment. It's, this was really me pushing myself out of my comfort zone and drawing with pencils which is really kind of uncomfortable for me and again I don't know what it is I don't know if it feels quite childish I don't know if it feels I don't know unfinished I'm, I don't know what it is but I always just love the black fine line look and so um, yeah it was it felt very different actually and very strange to draw with a colored pencil but um, yeah really fun so I'm just using this colored pencil here is a super color Caran d'Ache and it means that it's water soluble so that's something I had in mind as I was sketching I thought if I sketch with a water soluble pencil it means that once I add color or add paint then it's going to help blend that a bit better so it should get rid of my pencil lines I could have used a graphite pencil but yeah again that's something I'm quite used to using so it was nice to kind of push myself so here I am being brave and going straight in with some gouache and I'm using my water brush pen so this is quite watery <laughs> um, gouache is great because if you layer it on thick you can get a lovely kind of color blocking kind of look but yeah I'm kind of watering it down a little bit because I wanted variation in the color and again this is a really I don't know interesting way of working for me I don't use gouache very much it's very much a new supply that I'm trying to embrace more of and again it's that letting go of control obviously when you're drawing with a fine line pen you're in control it's quite controlled what you're doing and so this idea of letting like fluid paint kind of flow across the page and especially in my drawing that was yeah that was it really took <laughs> it took quite a while for me to just let go and enjoy the process here I'm adding quite a lot of water and I realized that I really really love the look of it it was really nice these gorgeous kind of patterns and granulations and va variation in um yeah the color and how it dried as well it's so beautiful and that's when I just kind of got lost in the process so it took me a while to unwind and 
at this point then I basically have my headphones on I had Lord of the Rings on on my um, tablet and then I just let myself enjoy the process of art I stopped overthinking trying to second guess what I was going to do next what's going to look best and just let myself play so here I'm using Neocolor Wands so that's what the white is and I decided to then use that as a resist so that was kind of a base layer and at first I used my graphite which is the art graph so it's like water soluble graphite and then I went in over the top with my watercolors as well and this was where my whole page got really messy <laughs> It got to a point where it was so messy, I felt like it was rubbish and I'd ruined it. And I think sometimes it's good to get to that phase and then you have to learn to push yourself forward. See here, I'm making all these little marks. I almost don't really know what to do. <laughs> and again, because I'm trying so hard not to default back to a black fine line, um, I'm also trying to work in colour which I don't normally draw my motifs in colour either. So yeah, really trying to push myself here and see what happens. Um, but yeah, playing around with watercolour, that was really fun. And I loved the way the resist worked as well. So as you can see, I let it dry. I kind of gave up with trying to save it. I thought, right, I'm going to let this dry and then work in over the top with coloured pencil. I love with coloured pencil the gorgeous textures you can get especially if you're using like different colours next to each other um, yeah there's just such a rich beautiful kind of layer, texture that you can layer up so this was quite interesting to me and it made me realise how much I do really love that relationship with having like a watercolour base so a nice watercolour wash and then working over the top of coloured pencil. And you can see I'm being quite scribbly here as well. So again, I'm still trying to keep that looseness. Um, I'm also trying to create some definition um, and make my motifs more obvious. I don't know, I'm almost, I'm trying to figure out how I can draw the primrose without really drawing the outline. So thinking about the negative space, the background, uh, when you look at photos, it's usually leaves, so hence why I picked greens, these greens and turquoises for the background. But again, I was just at this point playing with materials. And then, this is where the magic happened. I did default in the end to a black fine line. You can see here, this is just using coloured pencil, very much out of my comfort zone. This has got no detail and it really, really does need some sort of detail. Um, but all the colour that's going on is so interesting to me, like the layering process. Finally, things are starting to come together. Anyway, I ended up defaulting to my black fine line, adding in as much detail as I could. And it just brought everything to life. I used a little bit more coloured pencil as well, just for some final colours, like the yellow in the centre of the flowers. And I also used um, the blue uh, Neo Colour One crayon quite loosely over the top as well. So again, just layering up textures. But yeah, just really enjoying the process. Here you can see that blue look all around. Can you see it just kind of layered on top of the green? But I was really really pleased with this page in the end it was something I couldn't have dreamt of creating when I first started and very different from the blackbirds that I'd drawn <laughs> the day before so yeah pleased with how it started still got a long way to go but nice to learn to loosen up anyway I will see you in the next video very soon lots of love bye